Hey, future weapon enthusiasts, Nick Young here, CEO of Desert Tech. I got something super cool to share with you guys today. This is our NGSW rifle submission. Uh, we designed this rifle for the NAGSAR and NGSW programs. A lot of people don't realize that Desert Tech participated in these programs and that we created a pretty neat and innovative uh, rifle system out of them. So we're gonna take a deep dive today into this rifle, talk about the specs, the capabilities, um, uh, explain how it measured up to the program goals. And I'm gonna also share my opinion of the programs and the uh, selections that they ended up making. At the end of this video, I'm going to uh, give my dream specification that I think would have been a much better replacement for the M4. If you're a firearms innovation junkie like I am, Make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel because we got a lot of new innovative things we're gonna share with you guys in the next couple weeks. We got invited into the NAGSAR program by PCP Ammunition. So PCP makes polymer case ammunition and in the program they designed the 6.8 round. It's called the 6.8 PCP. When we fired this round out of our 20 and 22 inch barrels, we got it up to 3,200 feet per second at standard chamber pressures. So a big improvement over what SIG was able to do with their 80,000 PSI cases. So the 6.8 PCP round is 26% lighter than the brass equivalent. And the brass equivalent of this round is a 270 WISM. It essentially fires the bullet the same way, the same velocity as what this can. So really impressive performance. So PCP, approached us because they needed a platform that had as long of a barrel as possible because they didn't want to exceed standard pressures. And so they also wanted to uh, maintain the 35 inch overall system length requirement and the weight requirements in our MDR rifle, quite frankly, was uh, the best candidate uh, to be able to do those things. We was really excited when they came to us uh, we really wanted to be a part of this and so we jumped right in uh, got to work and i think it took us about a year to develop the nagsar rifle system that you see here all right we're going to start at the front and we're going to go through the accessories that they wanted for this rifle submission uh, starting with the silencer um, we did a reflex suppressor that goes back over the barrel to here the end of our barrel i believe ends right here um, it's a flow through suppressor because they wanted to reduce the toxic fumes that enter or exit the ejection port into the face of the shooters. Uh, this is a generation two uh, suppressor design. All of the generation three designs we actually submitted into the programs and so we don't have a generation three design in house, they're all gone. Uh, this is a generation one design of the suppressor here. Um, but yeah, moving back from there, uh, T-Works did a power rail system that all of the rifles were supposed to submit with. Uh, they actually didn't adopt the power rail, they abandoned it in the, the actual adoption of the SIG Spear. But uh, we have power rail uh, systems on the sides, the top, the bottom, that essentially allows communications between devices. And so like if you have a Wilcox rangefinder and a, a separate optics and it can actually you know, transmit data back and forth and it gives you the ability to have a a singular uh, switch pad that can activate anything and everything on the rail system uh, you can see we also have a battery pack on the bottom here so this was a generation one designed by t-works uh, we it, it needed some refinement in my opinion so they also wanted a bipod a lightweight bipod because uh, this, this was going to replace the saw machine gun in the NAGSAR program. And so replacing the saw machine gun, definitely they want to have a bipod in there to uh, facilitate stable prone uh, shooting. They wanted the weapon to be select fire, you know, safe, single and fully automatic modes of fire. They wanted a range finder on there. We had a Wilcox Raptor on there and we had a, uh, I think it was a one to six or one to eight optic that I'll show in a in a photo. Uh, this is a uh, LCAN 1 to 6. So this is not the optic we submitted, but it's a pretty fair representation of, of what kind of optic that they, they were looking to, to adopt on the system. And they actually was pretty excited about the Ford ejection system and they really liked the Ford ejection. They wanted us to 
uh, open the port so that we could have more viewing area for uh, safety checking of the chamber. And so that's why you can see this uh, ejection port is uh, substantially larger in the opening area here. Uh, we had to design new magazines to facilitate these new larger cartridges. So these magazines are wider and longer and the magazine well had to be modified to accept these new magazines. These are 20 round magazines. So uh, design changes on the gun to accommodate the new cartridge, you know, the magazine, the mag well, the port ejection chute. Um, we redid the bolt carrier system uh, to facilitate the larger diameter uh, cartridge, uh, used ultra high strength steels. We ended up using those same high strength steels in the MDR after we uh, developed it for this because we found it was so much stronger that we felt like it was a nice improvement for the MDR. We redid the barrel mounting system on this gun in an attempt to improve the accuracy. We really wanted to uh, reduce the uh, harmonic disturbances caused by the actuating piston in the rifle. Um, at the end of the day though, the rifle ended up being about the same accurate as an MDR, um, about one and a half to two minutes of angle of accuracy, which was well within the accuracy requirement of the, the specifications. As far as the, the specification of the rifle, as you see here with a Wilcox Raptor, it weighs 12 and a half pounds. The overall length of the rifle with the silencer is 35 inches. Um, without the silencer, it's actually uh, uh, shorter than an M4. So that's pretty exciting, it's, it's pretty neat. So I'll pull the silencer off and let you guys see you know, how much the length was reduced without the silencer. Yeah, you can see that this is pretty small. This is a 16 inch barrel AR with the stack, the stock collapsed. And so you can see lengthwise, you know, this thing was actually pretty dang small. So in the programs, we successfully completed the Naxar program and just prior to completing the Naxar program, they introduced the NGSW program. So we submitted the exact same rifle systems into the NGSW program that we submitted into the Naxar program. Unfortunately, we didn't get down selected in the NGSW program uh, due to a technical issue with our paperwork. But had we been able to proceed, we had some pretty exciting plans for the platform. So. Uh, the first thing we wanted to do was actually introduce a quad stack magazine that would be either a 40 or 50 round magazine. Uh, the reason for that was we wanted to reduce the amount of reloads because they were giving up, you know, belt fed machine gun uh, with, you know, 50 and 100 round belts and uh, going to 20 round magazines. And so we felt like if we could have a 40 round mag or a 50 round mag, they really weren't giving up anything as far as volumes of fire compared to a belt fed weapon. The other reason was uh, to reduce the weight penalty of the magazine. So as you look at reducing the ammunition, so this ammunition is 26% lighter, but you're not really factoring in the adding of a box fed magazine when you compare it to a belt fed. So essentially adding in a 20 round still box fed magazine makes the overall ammunition weight be you know, 17% uh, heavier than if we did a brass case equivalent in just a belt fed without any box fed magazine penalty. So we uh, analyzed it and realized that if we did a quad stack magazine, we could eliminate 30% of the weight of the magazine. And the net result would be that a new polymer case magazine, uh, a new polymer case ammo with quad stack magazines would weigh exactly the same as brass case equivalent ammunition in a belt. So it was a, a super exciting theme. And when we weren't down selected, we liked the quad stack magazine idea so much that we ran with it anyway. And we made our, our Quattro 15 to accept those quad stack magazines. Um, because it's a great idea and it's, it's, I believe it's the future of magazines and it's the new standard for capacity.
One of the other big things that we were going to do was make a generation four flow through suppressor that was going to be about 30% smaller than this and have better suppressive capabilities. And we felt like that we could also reduce the weight of the rifle even further. And we were gonna to continue to try to refine the barrel mounting system uh, to again, mitigate those harmonic disturbances that the piston causes. And, and we wanted to completely redo the power rail system. We didn't want this you know, polymer attached handguard on there. We wanted to actually uh, have a monolithic receiver that extended all the way forward and have integrated rails into or integrated power rails into the receiver as well as reduce this ginormous bo uh, battery pack on the bottom and uh, reconfigure it to be in front of the, the trigger guard here similar to this grip on this MDR Micron right here. Um, what we felt like was we could actually do a touch pad for you know, trigger finger activation for different enablers around the front of the trigger guard, as well as having battery packs that uh, were similar to like a, a magazine of a pistol uh, to be able to just you know, slide in the grip of this forward grip or else the pistol grip of the gun. Anyways, I think the most refined uh, system would have been putting them in the pistol grip of the gun with some you know, power buttons up front. However, it would have been a, probably the next generation would have been to just have a, a singular module with buttons and battery right in front of the trigger guard right there that tied into uh, integrated power rails into this monolithic receiver. But yeah, so that was going to be the next generation of NGSW for Desert Tech. I'll put up on the screen how our specs compared to the program goals, as well as how our rifle system compared to the SIG Spear. So the Naxar program was focused on replacing the M249 saw machine gun and they reduced the weight of that system by first reducing the loadout of ammunition. So the saw has a loadout of 600 rounds. This new rifle plan was to reduce the loadout to 210 rounds as well as utilize these polymer case uh, cartridges that would reduce you know, 26% off of the brass case equivalent. The program goal was 20%, so PCP accomplished 26%. The other way that they were going to reduce the weight was by taking weight out of the rifle system. And so our rifle system, all done up, is substantially less weight than the saw. When they introduced NGSW, they expanded the uh, goals of the program to now replace the M4 rifle. And it really was a surprise to all of us uh, because you know, that's a pretty lofty, um, lofty theme. Like that's the, the single largest uh, small arms uh, replacement program that I've ever seen in my lifetime. And so all of us as competitors and companies were super excited to be a part of this effort. Now, was it a good idea to replace the M249 with this, this new rifle technology? Uh, I think so, yes, because you had substantial improvements in capabilities, more than doubling the uh, lethality of the system, uh, reducing the weight pretty substantially. So replacing the saw, yeah, I thought that was a great idea. Uh, replacing the M4 with this system, uh, I have a lot of reservations about that. And the reason being is these new 6.8 rifles are you know, twice as heavy as the M4 system. Uh, the total soldier burden of weight is more than double what the M4 system was. Uh, the recoil of these systems is double what the M4 system is. Even though those rifles are you know, <laughs> twice as heavy, the recoil is still twice as much with that additional weight. Uh, in my opinion, I feel like that they re, they're reliving the mistake of the M14 that they made in the 1950s. I think that they're going to uh, start deploying these rifles and uh, soldiers are not going to like them and their effectiveness is going to fall because of the high recoil, the high weight um, is going to really reduce uh, soldier capabilities. But I'm just a gun designer and a future weapon enthusiast, so that's just my opinion. But 
Time will tell. I really feel like that it's going to kind of go the way of the 556 SCAR, where they win this contract, they start adopting it, they find, you know what, this is a big mistake, we want to keep our M4s. I think in the next two years, that, that's going to be what happens. My thoughts on the 6.8 PCP cartridge, I think it's a really awesome cartridge for uh, replacing a belt-fed machine gun. I think it's a great cartridge for a designated marksman rifle. I don't believe it's a good replacement for the 5.56 round. However, uh, in selecting this round, uh, quite ironically, when you look at the ballistics of a 6.5 Creedmoor, then it's almost the same as this. And so essentially they could have got the desired performance out of an existing 6.5 Creedmoor without having to go through the effort of designing an entirely new cartridge um, and spending hundreds of millions on these programs. They could have just, you know, standardized on that 6.5 Creedmoor right out of the gate. So as far as I'm concerned, I think I would just have used a 6.5 Creedmoor, made it a designated marksman rifle, and had a different focus of the program to maybe look at the CSAS uh, as maybe upgrading the CSAS program. As far as the polymer case technology, I think this technology is awesome and I would love to see this go uh, more mainstream. When we were testing these ammunitions in our, our development, they function very reliably. Uh, they offer a lot of really cool benefits. For example, the polymer case is an insulator so it keeps your chamber substantially cooler than uh, brass case ammunition, which is going to substantially increase the amount of rounds you can fire before you experience any cook-offs. It also reduces the weight by 26%. And to put that in perspective, if we made a 5.56 polymer case round and put it in our 53 round quad stack magazines, then that loaded magazine would have the same weight as brass case ammunition loaded in a 30 round magazine. So essentially you're, you can double the amount of ammunition a, a soldier can carry with this polymer case ammunition in our quad stack magazines. So 53 rounds polymer case mag weighs the same as 30 round uh, brass case loaded magazine. That's a, a substantial improvement in uh, ammo capacity. So my thoughts on these power rail systems are I don't believe that they have a future. I love you know, new firearms technology as much as anybody that you ever met, but I don't think that this is the best way to achieve the goals that they're trying to achieve. Uh, in the past with old enablers, they might have a, a separate uh, visible light, a separate you know, laser, separate you know, IR illuminator, and they needed to bring all of those things together. And today you have really awesome integrated devices that are really combining visible and IR into one device with control switches that are uh, very ergonomically placed. The best being the mall enabler, uh, because they got the controls right, right on the top where your thumb's going to be uh, placed anyway. So I don't really feel like that uh, there's really much of an advantage to, to do these full rail integrations. I think that if uh, the companies that are designing the uh, illuminators and the lasers and the range finders just integrate all those things into one unit, then you don't really have to have all of this crap on the gun. So I think that this is the last time we're gonna see any kind of power rail systems in any kind of military program because those device companies are doing a really good job today of integrating those themes right into the device themselves. So these are unnecessary. All right, so this is the part of the video where I get to dream and spec what I think would have been a better replacement for the M4 rifle. Um, I would have started with developing a cartridge like the 6 Arc or the 6 Max where they offer a significant performance improvement with minimal weight penalty and minimal recoil increase. So looking at the performance of the 6 Max, you got a supersonic range of 1,250 yards. And at 1,000 yards, you're 30% less drop than a 5.56. And 
the wind deflection of the 6 Max is half of what the 556 five, is at 1,000 yards. And the energy the 6 Max retains at 1,000 yards is the same energy that the 556 five, has at 350 yards. So, you know, tripling that distance for that same energy. And the cool thing is the weight penalty of the rifle is not very much and it only increases the recoil by 30%, whereas the 6.8 Fury is more like 230% increase in recoil. And the weight of the 6 Fury is pretty much double what the M4 is. Now, the 6 Max rifle configuration I'm describing would probably be about two and a half pounds heavier than the M4, but understand that most of that weight penalty is not necessarily the rifle or ammunition it comes from adding a suppressor and the heavier vortex fire control system so those two things are at least half of that weight penalty now we could also uh, reduce the overall soldier weight burden to be only one pound heavier than the m4 soldier weight burden even though the rifle system would be about two and a half pounds heavier. And the way that we can do that is by utilizing a polymer case with the 6 Max, because the, the 6 Max cartridge is nearly the same weight as a 5.56 already. And by putting a polymer case on there, you can reduce it about 30%. And combining that with 53 round quad stock magazines, those magazines will save 30% off the mag weight. So, Polymer case, six max ammo, quad stack magazines um, gives us a total weight for the entire rifle, ammo, mags, the whole loadout weight that the soldier has to carry. It's only one pound heavier than a complete M4 rifle system with 30 round magazines and traditional brass case 5.56 ammo. So that's, uh, I think that's like a super cool spec because you're getting, you know, three times the energy at a thousand yards. You're getting a supersonic range at 1250, a half the wind deflection, um, performance, at least bullet flight characteristics that aren't uh, a, a lot different than the 6.8 Fury, as well as a recoil in, increase that is pretty manageable still from a user perspective. Anyways, and you can have the 53 round magazine so you've still got like belt fed volumes of fire with the advantage of a quick reload box fed. And we would take it a step further and we would have wanted to incorporate it into a bullpup rifle, rifle system, which I think we could have reduced the overall length of the suppressed rifle to be less than 30 inches. So that's five inches shorter than what the uh, folded uh, suppressed length is of the 6.8 Fury uh, SIG rifle is right now. Anyway, so I think that would have been like awesome. Like, <laughs> uh, yes, I think that would have been very, a very successful spec in replacing the M4. Let me know what you think of our NGSW rifle and the dream spec that I mentioned. As well, if you feel like a different uh, specification would be more optimal at replacing the M4, uh, let's talk about it in the comments. I feel like that this you know, creative thinking process and allowing us to go outside of the box and not just be married into, well, this is how it's always been, is an important part of innovation. So thanks for watching.